Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, we're doing a couple updates to this little guy. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me pay my bills. A few weeks ago, I made a video about how I made this guy, all of the electronics, the 3D printing, and then since that video, he's obviously had a paint job. We named him AX3. Uh, it stands for anxiety because one time we left him on and his head servo kind of ended up uh, shaking his head left and right and it looked like he was having a little anxiety attack and it was very cute. He's been fully painted by my partner. There's a link down below to her Instagram. It's at Freak Factory. She does amazing work. We were actually able to take him out with us when we went to Maker Central. We also brought him to Comic-Con later on. Both those times, the electronics failed me. At Maker Central, the, the remote battery died. I didn't bring a spare because why would I? And at Comic-Con, he didn't even want to start up. I think the battery I used is just not ideal for this. So we will be upgrading all of his electronics today. I've prepared this little care package for him. We're going to be adding a speaker with a soundboard and an amplifier so that he can actually have like cute little noises. I will be changing his D1 Mini to this Raspberry Pi Pico W. I just need a bit more input and output pins than what the D1 Mini provides. I've got a better uh, back boost converter, so that's nice. And I'm also giving him a, a four pack of uh, 18650s, which should be like 12 volts. And then I'll be taking that down to like five volts with the back boost converter, which will hopefully make him work properly this time. And for the remote, I will be adding uh, buttons to trigger the sounds as well. Software wise, I'm not going to be changing a lot. I'm still going to be using UDP for the communication between the remote and the bot. I'm just going to be adding more rows for like the buttons and stuff. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. Let's begin with the audio. This is the Adafruit soundboard. It is super easy to use. You load your files on, it has like two megabytes of flash, and then you change the name of the file to correspond to GPIO pins. And also there's like different modes, so you can have like background music, which always plays audio, or you can just have them be triggered by GPIO pins, which is more likely what I'm going to be doing today. There are several different versions of these. There are 16 megabyte versions, and there are versions with the amplifier built into them. Uh, I decided to go with a cheap amplifier that I found on eBay. I've got it all wired up and all I have to do now is touch the ground to GPIO 0. There's a test file already preloaded on it and it's kind of hard to hear but it's saying left. It's not the best quality audio clip but it's saying left because I'm connected to the left speaker and if I switch it to the right speaker it says right. Now that we know that it works, I'm gonna upload more files into this and I'm gonna hook it up to this Raspberry Pi Pico W so we can actually control it. Right, so I've got everything wired up and connected. I'm gonna start off by saying I don't like this amplifier. It's giving me a lot of static noise on the speaker and I don't quite know how to get rid of it. So I'm probably gonna design my system to be able to swap this out for a better one in the future. Apart from that, everything works great. I've got the Pico W wired into the soundboard so now I can press play on the code and it will cycle through all of the GPI opens connected. And that's it. Now that I know that this works, I'm going to add the other components from the droid, like the LED and the servos, to make sure that it all works together. And then I'm going to make a PCB board that holds all of these components together so that I can just quickly put it inside the bot and take it out when I need to. Right, all the individual components are wired up and I've also programmed them individually so I know they all work. Uh, for me to progress, I now need to add the buttons to the remote so that I can start having all these things communicate together. So let's do this. So I had a real one step forward, three step back situation. Uh, I was planning to use the Raspberry Pi Pico W to run everything on the inside of the bot and all the individual parts worked perfectly. Uh, the problem was for some reason, I can't open an access point on the Raspberry Pi Pico for this guy to connect to. Uh, it just wouldn't work. I spent like a whole day trying to figure out why. In the end, I gave up on the Pico and I just switched to an ESP32 and it works perfectly. So here's the remote, it's all separated out. I've got my joystick up here and the four buttons I added here and theoretically all works. If I power it up, I'm just gonna wait for confirmation from my uh, terminal output. So now I can control the wheels with the joystick. 
It also changes the color of the LED depending which way I'm going, but I can also play sounds. I disconnected the amplifier because it still has that annoying staticky sound. But theoretically, I can play sounds. That works perfectly. You'll probably notice that I plugged in all eight pins on the soundboard to the ESP, but I've only got four buttons. Uh, I am planning to have some sounds that play in the background, and also I'm gonna add a thing where I can press two buttons at the same time and it will play like sound number five. So now that I've tested everything and everything works together, I can start putting it on a PCB board. Cue time lapse. Many hours later, I'm tired, but we have a finished board. Look at how pretty it is, and look, everything is removable. So that in case I want to use them for a different project, I can just put them back in later. Also, always label which way things go, because if you don't, you'll just end up burning stuff. And I've left extra space here for when I want to exchange the amplifier in the future, but like in the process of like getting everything connected together properly with like with cables and stuff, it's working fine now. There's still a little bit of static coming through, but it's not as bad as it was before. So, everything's connected, the code is loaded up, all I have to do is pop this battery in, it does that before the code loads, and then my remote connects to it, and theoretically, okay, I, it worked like two minutes ago, I swear. See? Told you. Forwards, backwards, left, right, and then we've got the head movement as well, there, and we also have GPIO 0, GPIO 1, GPIO 2, GPIO 3. And see what I mean, the audio just sounds a lot clearer now. GPIO 0. So I'm not 100% sure what was up, but it works, so I'm probably going to keep it for now. All I have left to do is to put all the electronics inside of him and put all these electronics inside the remote and we should be good to go. Fingers crossed. Right, everything is back together, it's time to turn it on. So without any further ado, bot on. Yeah, I, I programmed it to have the Kim Possible sound when it turns on, but theoretically Cool, I don't know what happened previously, but it works. And the most important part, the sounds. Adorable. Again, adorable. That one doesn't sound quite as good. That 
That one somehow sounds even worse. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I did program it to do the two button thing, but it doesn't quite work. It just, it just gets stuck on that audio.